drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by Eripedia world previous lecture we discussed about some of the non ferrous uh, alloying systems today we'll continue the discussion the first metal that we are going to discuss is magnesium we will discuss about magnesium alloys most important property of magnesium is its very very low density magnesium is just 1.7 gram per cubic centimeter aluminium on the other hand was 2.7 gram per cubic centimeter iron is close to 7.5 gram per cubic centimeter so magnesium is practically one of the least dense metal that exist magnesium alloys have hexagonal cubic system structure okay HCP structure and it is relatively soft metal it is quite a soft metal the problem the HCP structure since it has effectively only three slip systems makes it quite difficult to deform so magnesium is not easily deformable this is the main point of concern in using magnesium alloys since many applications require deformation to make the end product thereby a lot of research is going on in the field of magnesium alloys in order to create something which is easily deformable so magnesium alloys are being researched to improve its deformation properties the problem with its deformation leads to fabrication by casting or hot working casting is basically liquefying the uh, magnesium alloy that is making it liquid and then casting it into the end product shape hot working how does that help increasing the temperature to high temperature leads to a better deformable properties it can be deformed easier than at room temperature so fabrication process is normally carried out by casting or hot working similar to aluminium magnesium also has a very low melting point aluminium had 660 degree celsius melting point magnesium had five, has 651 degree celsius melting point quite similar magnesium is a very very reactive metal thereby if you expose magnesium to air and it is uh, slightly high in temperature if it is heated then it catches fire instantly okay so it's better to avoid exposing magnesium to heated air or exposing heated magnesium to air either way it can catch fire magnesium easily corrodes this is a big disadvantage under marine conditions therefore magnesium should be avoided from being used under marine conditions it can easily corrode now the alloying elements that are normally used for magnesium alloys is aluminium zinc manganese and some rare earth metals some rare earth elements are also used these are the main alloying elements and the magnesium alloys are either cast or wrought cast means liquefied and uh, shaped finally wrought means it can be treated by different deformation processes so the alloying basically improves the deformation behavior slightly and thereby it can be even either cast or wrought okay now let us see the next kind of uh, alloying system that is titanium alloys titanium has also a low density relative to iron not as low as aluminium or magnesium it has a density of 4.5 gram per cc advantage of titanium contrary to aluminium and magnesium which had a very low melting point the melting point of titanium is quite high it is 1668 degree celsius which is actually uh, very high even higher than iron in addition to that titanium has a very very high Young's modulus the Young's modulus for titanium is 107 gigapascal which is very very high thereby titanium alloys are extremely strong 
and the ultimate tensile strength for titanium ions can be as high as 1400 megapascals titanium alloys is also very ductile and easily malleable so the good properties is it is strong as well as ductile has a very high melting point the drawback is that it has chemical reactivity is high at elevated temperature so this is a negative the chemical reactivity increases at high temperature this is positive property this is a positive property another positive property is at room temperature very good corrosion resistance so this is also a positive property the corrosion behavior of titanium alloys is good at room temperature main drawback of titanium alloys is that it is very very costly it's quite costly therefore the titanium alloys is only used in very specialized cases okay so just to recap the positives are extremely strong ductile and uh, machinable very good corrosion resistance negatives chemical reactivity is high at elevated temperature and quite costly thereby titanium alloys are mainly used in scenarios like airplane structure specialized application spacecraft again specialized application implants body implants can be made out of titanium alloys again a specialized application okay next let us see refractory metals refractory metals as the name suggest refers to metals which has very high melting point so some of the examples of refractory metals are niobium which has a melting point of 2468 degree celsius molybdenum 2623 degree celsius tantalum 3020 degree celsius and the highest melting point metal known tungsten which has 3410 degree celsius so as you can see this melting point of these metals are very very drastically high compare this to the melting point of aluminum which was 660 degree celsius compare this to even the melting point of titanium which was quite good at 1668 degree celsius but these are even better than those and thereby these metals have special applications under high temperature condition okay now what is it that gives such a high melting point for these metals the fact is that they have very very strong interatomic bonding the bond strength for these metals are very high in addition these refractory metals has large elastic moduli high strength as well as very high hardness the very high hardness is a manifestation of the strong interatomic bonding and these properties even exist at elevated temperature the idea that the properties remain good even at elevated temperature makes them very very appropriate to be used at high temperatures okay now refractory metals as such can have varied uses but the most important fact is that their high melting point makes them very suitable for high temperature application so mainly they are used for high temperature condition application okay now tantalum and molybdenum is also added to steel as a alloying element in order to improve corrosion behavior these four refractory metals are also added as alloying elements in super alloys which are then used in aircraft industry so these have specialized application to the refractory metals are basically used under conditions where they will be exposed to high temperature like aircraft industry in scenarios where the temperature might go very very high like uh, the rocket nozzle where the temperature is very high at entry reentry or uh, exit due to high frictional forces so under such circumstances what happens is refractory metals come into play in addition to ceramics which we did not discuss in details 
okay so this uh, brings us to the end of our discussion about non ferrous alloys and this brings us to the end of the discussion on this course basically uh, this introductory course on material science and engineering has exposed you to several aspects of it the next lecture we will conclude the course by revisiting and recapping what we discussed and what we did not discuss what are the further extension to the courses that you need to take if you are interested to know further about material science and engineering so stay tuned for our last concluding lecture till then have a great day goodbye